All right, part two of thermochem is about finding the specific heat of a particular metal. Uh, so you should have done this already in lab and calculated this, uh, or found some sample data. Uh, some data. Here's our sample data. You need the mass of the water. You should have that. You should have the mass of the metal. You should have measured the final after the metal and water were together, and also their initial temperatures. So the initial temperature of the metal and the initial temperature of water, just like part one, remember the initial temperature of water is the same as the initial temperature of the calorimeter. In our case, 23 degrees. When you set up the calculation for part two, it's similar to part one. The sum of the Q's will equal zero. That's the law of conservation of energy. Well, what Q's are there? That is, what changes temperature? Well, the metal will cool down uh, because it's really hot. The water will warm up, and the calorimeter being the same temperature of the water will also warm up. So we solve for Q metal by moving these to the other side. And so Q metal is negative Q water and Q calorimeter. Now I'm going to go through the numbers. I pre-wrote them out for you, so if you miss anything, make sure you pause the video. Uh, and rewind if needed. So, Q of the metal, that's the mass of the metal, times the CSP of that metal, then there's T final, minus the initial temperature of the metal. What does that equal? That equals negative, from up here, uh, the Q of water, M of water, times the CSP of water, and then T final minus T initial of water, plus CP of the calorimeter, T final, minus T initial of the calorimeter. Remember, these two T initials are the same. And do you see this star here? You better burn your eyes right here on this thing. You need the average CP from part one of the calorimeter. A major mistake is either not using that number or using, uh, for trial one, the first trial that you got for CP and then the second and third. You don't do that. You need the average number right here that you calculated in part one. Okay, let's go on. So uh, we have the M, we plug that in for the mass of the metal. The CP of the metal, that's what we're looking for. And then here's the temperature difference that we showed you earlier. And then the mass of the water, the CSP of the water, and here's the temperature difference. And again, remember, CP, this is the average of the calorimeter, T final minus T initial. And then just some simplification, found that number, then found both of these numbers, and that equals negative 345. So we can find the CSP of the metal. In our case, it's 0.199 joules per gram degree C. This is a number you can double check online to see if it matches with your metal. And it better be a positive number as well.